the commercial space industry is heating up. 50 years ago, the outer space was reserved for only superpowers like America and Russia. But today, there is a democratization of space. Commercial industry is inching us closer to the cosmos. The commercial space industry using multi-million dollar satellites and rockets is increasingly playing a part in our everyday life. This is a trillion dollar industry. Apart from the major players such as NASA, ESA, Roscosmos, some other private companies like SpaceX, Rocket Lab and Blue Origin are also in the race of space exploration. But there is another player in the space industry, a traditional national agency, extremely cost-conscious and result-oriented, who is setting up a new definition in the space exploration, ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 0, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of normal. Indian Space Research Organization is the brainchild of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, fondly remembered as the father of the Indian Space Program. It was due to his efforts that the Indian government felt the need to have its own space program and use it for the development of the country. It was established as Indian National Committee for Space Research in 1962 and later became ISRO in 1969. ISRO launched its first rocket from a remote and sleepy village called Thumba on 1963. Since its formation, ISRO has achieved great success and also struggled at times. From launching its first rocket in 1963 to launching 104 satellites at one time in 2017, ISRO has come a long way and gave India many reasons to feel proud of. As a scientist, I am um, proud to be associated with ISRO in a small way. So ISRO, as we know, is a very reputed organization of the country and most importantly, it's a completely homegrown. So like uh, the technologies that we have developed, ISRO has developed to uh, launch the satellite or launch the vehicle, space vehicle. These are all completely indigenous and students and scientists from the university like Guwahati University, like other state universities or other universities of India, they have gone on to study the space and they have gone to join ISRO and ultimately they are the scientists and they are building the nations. So that's why ISRO is very reputed, very respected and it's one of the achievers and now the ISRO success rate is so high it is even highest I mean among the uh, all space agencies. And most importantly it is actually very very indigenous there is no like uh, we have not done any reverse engineering like buying a rocket from Russia or buying a rocket from United States and the reverse engineer to make our own rockets. It's not like that. It is completely from building from the scratch and building to the launching vehicle. ISRO currently has two operational launch vehicles to carry spacecraft to space. The Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or PSLV and Geosynchronized Satellite Launch Vehicle or GSLV. PSLV is the third generation launch vehicle of India. Chandrayaan 1 was India's first mission to moon under Chandrayaan program. The mission is best known for helping to discover evidence of water molecules on the moon. It was successfully launched on 22nd of October in the year 2008 from Satis Thawan Space Center, Shirari Kota. This is Mission Director PSLV C-11 has placed the Chandrayaan spacecraft in its orbit. The mission of C-11 is completed. It's a historic moment as far as India is concerned. We have started our journey to the moon. 
and the first leg of the journey has gone perfectly well. ISRO launched its first Mars probe, Mangalayan, on 5th of November 2013 from Satis Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota, using a PSLV rocket. ISRO is the fourth space agency to reach Mars after Russia, US and European Space Agency. ISRO is also the first space agency to successfully launch the mission in its maiden attempt. This mission is called the most economically successful interplanetary mission in the world. Approximately 450 crore, which is 73 million US dollar, were spent in this mission. हम मंगलायन किया एक किलोमीटर का सिर्फ सात रुपया खर्चा आया इतना ही नहीं अमेरिका में हॉलीवुड की जो फिल्म बनती है हॉलीवुड की फिल्म का जो खर्चा होता है उससे भी कम खर्चे में भारत के वैज्ञानिकों ने साइंटिस्टों ने टेक्नीशियनों ने मार्स मिशन का खर्चे कम खर्चे में पूरा किया on 15 February 2017, ISRO achieved a major milestone with a successful record setting launch of 104 satellites on a single PSLV rocket. Three satellites were from India and 101 satellites were from five other countries. The state separated. Carter set two series spacecraft injected into orbit. Two ISRO nano satellites, INS 1A and 1B, are injected into orbit. The launch helps to cement India's space as a serious player in the rapidly increasing space industry. Chandrayaan 2 is India's second lunar mission, which was launched on 22nd of July 2019 in a GSLV Mark 3 M1. It was a highly complex mission that brought together an orbiter, lander called Vikram and rover called Pregyan. Its goal were to explore south pole of the moon and studying not just one area of the moon but also the areas combining the exosphere, the surface as well as the subsurface of the moon in a single mission. On 20th of August 2019, Chandrayaan-2 was successfully inserted into lunar orbit. The 1,471 kg Vikram was designed to execute a soft landing on the lunar surface. But just at the altitude of 2.1 km, ISRO lost communication with Vikram. It is said that only 5% of the mission was lost. The remaining 95% of the mission, the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, was still orbiting the moon successfully and transmitting tons of data. ISRO is not just a part of hugely competitive space race, but it is also popularizing space research and creating future scientists. And this uh, Regional Academic for Center for, uh, for Space is an effort of ISRO toward going into the people, common people. Like here, for example, this Regional Academic of Center for Space, which is established in Guwahati University, is the first uh, of this kind of center established in a university. And this is for the whole Northeastern region, where we will encourage the young scientists and young students to work for high-end research problem. And now that this center that we are having at Guwahati University, it will actually look forward to having research in cutting edge research in very many different fields, not only in space, but also in material science, but also in electronics, but also in instrumentation, robotics, artificial intelligence. There, I mean, you just name a thing, it is there. So it is all actually a spin off from the ISRO's effort toward building scientists and building nation. So these students that will produce, they will one day go and build a rocket for which probably uh, people will be uh, go going to the space. 
the future looks bright for ISRO with plenty of interesting projects. The Aditya L1 mission planned for the next two years and the first ever manned mission Gaganyaan planned for 2020, planned for 2022 are two of the better known big mission. ISRO made India's dream of reaching the stars and the moon a reality. ISRO is a crucial part of the development of India and will always continue to serve the country and mankind. India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. After 1990, Government of India decided to open up its market to the world and adopted globalization of economy. That's when Indian economy started expanding. Due to this rapid economic transformation, India started building new cities, industries and markets. But in the process of economic development, India somehow neglected one very sensitive and crucial issue – drinking water conservation and management. Water crisis is a major concern that the entire world is facing. And talking about India, India is not far behind. When we talk about Northeast, particularly Assam, the people of Assam are having a hard life and they are also suffering from this water crisis. India is facing the worst water crisis in its history. A report by the government's think tank, Niti Ayo, said that 600 million people in India face high to extreme water stress. About 2 lakh people die every year due to inadequate access to safe water. Maharashtra is one of the worst affected regions. Villagers here sometimes wait for days before government tankers carrying water trucks where they desperately need them. But the trucks only provide about 20 liters per person a day, which people ration for everything including drinking, cooking, bathing and housework. To fulfill the growing demand of high population, India is investing in agriculture. In the last decade, so much water is being pumped from the ground for agricultural and industrial use that aquifers are being rapidly depleted and wells are going dry. Almost every part of India is facing the shortage of drinking water. Cities like Gohati in northeastern region are also facing shortage of drinking water. The groundwater, we are uh, extracting groundwater unabatedly. So, uh, there has been a tremendous decline in groundwater in uh, Guwahati nowadays. And despite we are uh, residing by a mighty river, Brahmutra, we are dirt of uh, drinking water. Irony is, northeastern region is one of the highest rainfall areas in the country. Though Kohati receives high rainfall each year and situated on the bank of the river Brahmaputra, majority of the population depends on water supply by government. Half of the city's population lives in informal manner which make water supply to each household complicated and challenging. It is our geology bond mission launched by the Prime Minister Pramati Mohde. Our kitchen is very good. We have a lot of water in the house. We have a lot of water in the house. We have a lot of water in the house. We have a lot of water in the house. We have a lot of water in the house. We have a lot of water in the house. 
আর তার কারণে হলে আমার মিশন মতো কাম করলেও আমি পি আর আই ইনস্টিটিউট লো আমি কাম আগাই নিব Public Health Engineering Department of the State of Assam is adopting various measures to cope up with the water crisis. The urbanization and then uh, unabated hill cutting, deforestation and especially if we see the Gohati, the present state of wetlands in Gohati and in one hand we are declining the, the we are destroying the natural water reservoirs and at the same time the groundwater we are uh, extracting groundwater unabatedly according to a survey conducted by non governmental organization india still has 27403 major wetlands but due to encroachment and development projects we are losing this wetlands at a rate of 2 to 3% each year next challenge is the how to research the groundwater and um, wetlands act as a kidneys of the earth so these are natural water research zone and if we can preserve those water bodies especially the natural water bodies and if we allow nature to a sufficient time and we believe that um, the groundwater levels can restore in uh, in quick time and uh, we must uh, have in every urban bodies urban um, um, cities urban region there must be sufficient natural water bodies so that the surface water gathered through different as the concrete surface are increasing day by day so the surface water generated by this concrete surface especially the pluvial water has to be uh, directed back to the natural uh, reservoirs and thereby if we conserve those natural reservoir automatically we can conserve the groundwater the destruction of wetlands is very crucial because this wetlands serve as the natural reservoir of water india receives very good amount of precipitation in the form of rainfall but the challenge is only 8% of that precipitation is captured for agricultural industrial and household uses making the matter worse Climate change is altering weather pattern and ocean currents resulting irregular rainfall. Across the planet one major river out of 10 no longer flows into the sea for several months of a year. Apart from rural areas metropolitan cities such as Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai and India's Silicon Valley Bangalore is grappling with the worst water crisis in its history. A survey says major Indian cities have lost one third of its wetland in the last decade due to development projects. Now this loss is causing schools, hotels, and other businesses to close down. According to government estimates, 21 Indian cities will exhaust their groundwater supply by 2020. Another challenge in water crisis is the pollution of fresh water sources. Every major river or wetlands across the globe are being polluted in an alarming rate. This is River Bhorolu flowing through the heart of Guwahati. Some decades ago fishing in this river was very common, but now no aquatic life can be found in here. Industrial waste from the city has turned the color of this river water into black. This Borlu river flows directly to the river Brahmaputra, polluting the lifeline of northeast India. What we need to do now is conservation and management of water. We have to capture more precipitation by either rainwater harvesting or other ways. Kwa pani bikhoy to ami ami okol sarkar ba bikhoy komosari etu solkubo noy gotike eta rajyo sahajogita participation to main kotha 
ৰাজ্য পাৰ্টিচিপেচন হলে আমি ইতিমধ্যে সাকসেস হৈছো কাৰণ আমি বহুত হাউস কমিটি এনেকে বনাই দিছো তেওঁলোকে চলাই আছে আৰু ভৱিষ্যতে যদি আমি সেই পদ্ধতি আমি অৱলম্বন কৰি সম্প্ৰসাৰিত কৰিব তেতিয়াহ'লে মই ভাবো এইটো সমস্যা সমস্যা নাথাকিব ইটছ উই হু নিডস টু বি কনশিয়াস এণ্ড বি মাইণ্ডফুল এবাউট নট ওয়েষ্টিং ওয়াটার ডেট উই উই কেন সেভ আওয়ার ফিউচার জেনেরেশন এণ্ড প্রভাইড ডেম উইথ এ বেটার লাইফ Though Assam is surrounded with hills, valleys and natural water bodies, yet Assam is in the race of water crisis. Yes, it's very unfortunate to know that Assam is in the list. Well viewers, now it's time for us to adopt certain measures for water conservation. Yes, we need to spread awareness about the importance of water. So, now it's time for us to save water and save life. So viewers with this we came to the end of today's segment on water conservation and istro coming up we have some new segments on science and technologies on recent happenings discoveries and inventions so let's have a look surgery is brutal on a human body and medical breakthrough that makes the surgical and healing process more efficient is always welcomed Biotechnology has now made it possible for the doctors to view an entire 3D image of the inside of a patient's body through the use of MRI and CT scans. This allows each organ to be precisely projected so that the surgeon can smell targeted incision to minimize bodily trauma to the patient. Solar energy is considered as the most prominent renewable source of energy. Different countries, private companies investing billions of dollar on solar energy in order to fight against climate change. University of British Columbia researchers successfully re-engineered the E. coli bacteria to power solar cells. The result solar cells that generated stronger current compared to that of the similar biogenic atoms in the past were capable of working even under dim light. This discovery will help to produce more energy than a traditional solar cell. Elon Musk, the founder of the private space faring company SpaceX recently unveiled his new Starship craft. Amazingly, it is designed to carry up to 100 crew members on interplanetary journeys throughout the solar system starting with Mars in 2024. The announcement is exciting, evoking deep emotions of hope and adventure. Mars has declared a fascinatingly short timeline to achieve orbit with this rocket. He wants to build four or five versions of the vehicle in the next 6 months. The first rocket will do a test launch to 20 km within a month and the final version will orbit the earth. So viewers that's all for today's episode. In the next segment we'll come up with new stories on science and technology. So now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and also subscribe in our YouTube channel. So this is Anupuri signing off for today.